This program has been funded by the Howard Gilman Foundation, the Gay Rose, the Gay and Lesbian Community's National 800 Number Service for Flowers, and the H. Van American Foundation. In the... Hey. Welcome your host for the evening, Garrett Glazer. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. What a, what a delight it is to be here. It's really terrific to be here, and what a change this is from E.T., from Entertainment Tonight, working in front of an out gay audience. Great. And listen, I appreciate an out gay audience because I live in Hollywood, where most of the big players are still in the closet, as you probably know. We call them lifetime bachelors. You know, they say, oh, he never got married because he's, well, he's just too busy for relationships. Uh, he's, he's married to his job. I mean, that's how we say it, right? Honey, if the homes in the Hollywood Hills could talk, they would probably say things like, the only straight thing here is the line from the bedroom to the Barbara Streisand CD collection. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. It's not, listen, it's not surprising. I mean, after all, Hollywood's major export is fantasy, right? You know that legend has it back in the 30s, Sam Goldwyn bought the script for the children's hour without even seeing it. And when an assistant told him, Sam, the girls in that play, they're lesbians, Sam is reported to have said, so we'll change it. We'll make them American girls. <laughs> Which is actually, it kind of makes sense the more I think about it. You know what gets me? Producers always say no gay actor can afford to come out because if he does, Nobody will believe him when he plays straight parts because he's only pretending. So I'm thinking about this. If I, if I get this straight, so to speak, um, a straight actor can play gay, that's okay. But a gay actor playing a straight part is only pretending. That's funny, I thought that's what actors get paid to do is pretend. So, so what in effect are they telling us? It's okay for William Hurt to kiss Raul Julia in Kiss of the Spider Woman because we know that Bill's not really gay. But it's not okay for some gay actor like, like Sir Ian McKellen, say, to kiss Meryl Streep because we know he's not really straight. Huh? <laughs> Hollywood, you're killing me. <laughs> listen, listen. I'll believe, I'll believe he's straight. I mean, I believe Christopher Reeve when he flew in Superman, didn't I? <laughs> Can I tell you how many... <clears throat> okay, calm down. We're not here to have fun. Can I tell you how many closet cases I've met in Hollywood? I mean, it's... Oh, God. I think it's ridiculous. Now, let me tell you a story about one actor. I don't want to mention his name, but believe me, you know who he is. I'm talking to him one day on the set, and he knows I know. And I know he knows I know. And he's talking like, you know, Mr. Action Adventure and all this, how he does all these dangerous stunts himself. And, you know, I know he'd rather be telling me about his new boyfriend and what they made for dinner last night, right? <laughs> and where they're going on their next vacation and what color they're going to be painting the living room and where they went to brunch last week. And instead, he's talking about some jump he took out of five-story building. Really, girl? Come on, honey. <laughs> and it's not just the guys either. I mean, there's a woman, a big, big producer at one of the studios. She brings her lover to the Christmas party every year, passes her off as a roommate, right? Okay, sure, you're making half a million dollars a year and you need help paying the rent. <laughs> Spare me, honey. Spare me. Actually, things are beginning to change in Hollywood and around the country. I think it's an exciting time to be a gay or lesbian person in America. And we've got some exciting celebrities with us tonight. We'll be hearing from Joel Gray, Judith Light, Liza Minnelli, and uh, I wonder if this is who I think it is. It can't be. Ladies and gentlemen, I think there's somebody in our audience I want you to meet. One, camera one, can you get a shot of her? This is uh, one of our greatest stars, a woman who taught generations of gay men how to walk, talk, smoke, <laughs> and serve a parakeet for lunch. <laughs> 
She's a legend who needs no introduction. Of course I don't. <laughs> I never have and I never will. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You know, in my day, a man wasn't just gay. He studied to be a queen. <laughs> <laughs> Except for you, Garrett. <laughs> you look like you spent your whole life studying just to go out one night. <laughs> it's all right, it shows. <laughs> but just remember this. I'm still the real queen in the studio today. <laughs> I think. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, we've gotta move on. Thank you very much, I think. Before I left Los Angeles, I had a chance to talk with some out movie industry insiders about where we stand today. And I found that something very exciting is going on. More than a dozen mainstream movies with gay themes are now in planning or production. Here's a look at the queer explosion in Hollywood. This was the scene outside last season's Academy Awards, gay and lesbian anger unleashed. Many saw unsympathetic and misleading portrayals of our community in big feature films like JFK, Basic Instinct, and The Silence of the Lambs. Now, gays and lesbians have finally said enough. Johanna Grama grew up in the film industry. Her father's a successful producer. Today, she heads Hollywood's Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation. We're talking about civil rights, we're talking about responsibility, and we're talking about breaking open the doors. Whether it's a result of the protests, a new consciousness in Hollywood as AIDS continues to devastate the industry, or if other factors are involved, this much is clear. The picture for lesbians and gay men in the movies is getting brighter. There are currently over a dozen films with gay themes in development. These are big pictures with big stars and major studios behind them. Many are being written, produced, or directed by openly gay filmmakers. David Ehrenstein is the film critic at The Advocate, the nation's most widely read gay and lesbian news magazine. What's it gonna take to get these movies done? Guts, just guts, not money. Not connections, because the money is there, the connections are there, it's the will to do it. Some are already doing it. Independent filmmakers, like director Nicole Kahn, her lesbian love story, Claire of the Moon, made on a shoestring budget, has been breaking attendance records in smaller theaters nationwide. There is not anybody who cannot relate to the intimacy issues involved in this film. The market is already there in one sense. The gay and lesbian community will go see this film. But how do they know that it exists? Yes, I think that we do have financial clout. And I think that we should support gay and lesbian themed pictures when they come out in droves. There will always be people who don't want to see us. But there are people out there who are on our side, whether they're gay or lesbian or straight. And that's what we should be focusing on. Does the industry owe our community anything? <laughs> um, the industry owes this community absolutely everything. Uh, if, if there were no gays and lesbians, there would be no Hollywood. And that is just a matter of fact. That's not hyperbole. That's just like the sun in the morning and the moon at night. Well, if we all you... left tomorrow, no movies, no television, no nothing. One note. Traditionally, the movie industry begins work on many more films than it completes. So far, only one theatrical feature has been given the go-ahead. It's an AIDS courtroom drama starring Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington. Jonathan Demme is directing. Over the years, Hollywood has been cautious, to say the least, about tackling gay themes. Not so in the theater. Currently, one show on Broadway looks at how gay men and lesbians are redefining the traditional family. In the Life is pleased to present a number from the Tony Award-winning musical, Falsettos. Please welcome Broadway cast members Stephen Bogardus, Philip Hoffman, Heather McRae, and Maureen Moore performing Unlikely Lovers. <laughs> Get morbid, right? 
it's just, don't fight. that I haven't died yet. Just stop it. I'm sick, but kicking. Jeez. All right. Louise. Good night. I'm staying here in this spot, whether you want me to or not. I'm staying. Here I am by your side, one old horny lover. Please go home and don't be scared. What's the fuss? I'm not scared. What good is a lover who's scared? Hit me if you need to. Slap my face or hold me till winter. Oh, baby, please do. Marvin, just go home and turn on TV. Drink a little something till you're dead. Think of me around, sleeping soundly in our bed. Marvin, hey, did you hear what I said? Shut your mouth, go to sleep. Time I met a sailor. Are you sleeping yet, or what is what? Wizard, but I can't help but feeling I failed. Let's be scared together. Let's pretend that nothing is all. There's nothing to fear. There's nothing Just to fear. stay right here. I love you. Maybe he's tired. Maybe he's waiting for us. Maybe he's waiting for a visit. Is it a bad time? We'll come back. If it's a bad time, we'll come back. We'll come in. Look at us for old friends. For unlikely lovers We don't know what time we'll bring I, I have to Let's look like we haven't And eat, say nothing Sky It's blue I love the sky I love the trees I love that weather I love the earth beneath my feet I love friends that hover Gee, we love to eat And we need something sweet Nothing to fear, just stay right here. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Who'd have thought? We four. Whoa.
despite the millions of dollars the entertainment industry contributes to the fight against AIDS each year, it's still criticized for hiding the epidemic. When the Names Project AIDS Memorial Quilt traveled to the nation's capital, In the Life went along. While there, we talked to some well-known entertainers about what generates lesbian, gay, and AIDS invisibility. Michael Bennett, Ron Field, Denim Elliott, Ralph John Damiano, Sergeant Rick Fenstermaker, United States Marine Corps, Tommy Hunter, Richard Corman, Ronnie Desiree, Liza Minnelli, Lily Tomlin, Bonnie Franklin, the names we all know, reading the names we can only remember. They flew in from Hollywood, a town criticized for ignoring AIDS, to honor the quilt, a monument praised for never letting us forget. But why, in a country which has on the whole regarded this epidemic with indifference, is Hollywood's response to the crisis so important? You can't open up a trade magazine like Variety or, or Hollywood Reporter and not see in the obituaries that someone else has died from it. Much of Hollywood is run by, by gays, and um, if we lost the gays, we would lose Hollywood. In fact, it's estimated that a quarter of the names listed in the Variety obituaries have died of HIV-related complications. If that's the case, why has it taken so long to release the films that deal with AIDS? Hollywood really likes to look uh, at the at the more uh, economically feasible ways of making money. Does something that's that sad sell? Since Brad Davis died and Tony Perkins, I think that that the the uh, the town is looking at itself and its values and its uh, attitudes. Uh, with perhaps a bit more openness and scrutiny. I know that there has been a, a problem in, in dealing with it in, in Hollywood as far as films are concerned, as far as hiring uh, out gay men, so forth, for romantic roles and stuff like that. It's difficult. It's, uh, it all has to do with money. It all has to do with um, advertising. In the land of ironies, where Rock Hudson embodied the vision of the straight white male, could homophobia still play a role? As a woman, even if you're over 35 or 40, you're discriminated against. You can imagine if you're openly gay or if you're HIV positive. But Hollywood's presence here today is symbolic of changing attitudes. The whole country is suffering so much, and AIDS is just a, a, a very one very large barometer for the kind of neglect and, and uh, intolerance and and, uh, and really ugliness uh, of so many so many seg segments of the of this population. So that maybe somehow, even if it's not specifically. Uh, uh, AIDS itself, maybe just the whole awareness of, of caring about what's going on. If gay rights and, and AIDS awareness is, is brought along in the whole rush of it, at least somehow there's some softening, some sens sensitizing of people in general. If everybody could see the quilt today and they could see what's happening to people and they could see how people are relating to each other and how there's no boundary, there's no person against person divided. It's all one people coming to share in a common experience. The bottom line, where the stars go, so go the cameras. And here in Washington on this Saturday in October, the cameras will catch more than they bargained for. Over 20,000 panels of memory and a quarter of a million people come to remember. It is not news that the theater community nationwide has been hard hit by the AIDS epidemic. Highly acclaimed productions like As Is, Safe Sex, and Angels in America directly address AIDS on stage. In Larry Kramer's new sequel to The Normal Heart called The Destiny of Me, the central character is himself an AIDS patient. He's portrayed by actor Jonathan Hadari, who joins me now. Jonathan, do you find uh, theater more willing today to discuss gay and lesbian issues and themes as a result of the attention paid to AIDS? Yes. <laughs> uh, the world is more willing to pay attention in, in, in whatever sense the theater reflects the rest of the world. It's the same there. Perhaps more willing because people are aware of how, hit, how hard hit the theater is. I know that you are actively involved with an organization called Broadway Cares. What do you guys do? Well, it's, uh, they've recently actually, I should slightly correct, you've merged with Equity Fights AIDS. Two units have joined with a slash between their two names. They raise a lot of money all around the country. They raise money, some of it actually goes to raising more money 
to raising the profile of AIDS. Uh, a tremendous amount of it, most of it goes to actual services and uh, funds for those in need, both in and out of the theater, and not only in New York, but as you said, nationwide. Shows in town, shows touring the country, uh, find various ways of raising money from bake sales, which, much to my astonishment, can bring in a tremendous amount of money, much more than they did when I was in high school. Sure. People seem happy to give you $4 for a brownie, knowing that the money is going to Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. You are an actor who goes back and forth between straight and gay roles. There is a perception, some would say a misperception, that this is a bad thing to do, that if you play gay roles, this will hurt your career. Has it hurt yours? Uh, I'm happy. <laughs> th th things have been going nicely. Uh, it's tricky. Uh, they don't call them straight roles. They call them gay roles, and a lot of the gay roles are indeed gay roles. Uh, I've played several gay roles that happen to be wonderful roles. They were very, very interesting men to play. Currently, the one I'm doing, uh, Destiny of Me, is a fascinating man to play. And uh, as I say, I, I, I play men, but sometimes they think, and well, there was a period after, I did Torch Song Trilogy, and then right after it did As Is, uh, somewhat trepidatiously about what would happen to my career. And I found I had to, for quite a number of years, I just turned down gay roles because they would sort of call me, oh yeah, hey, John, hey, Jonathan Adair, he'll do it. Get him, he'll do it. <laughs> and very often they were indeed gay roles in the demeaning sense. And they had no interest to me anyway because they just weren't very good parts. Sure. <laughs> What advice would you give to uh, young performers, uh, lesbians and gay men around the country, who are struggling with whether to come out? You know, they wonder, gee, will it hurt me? What would you say to these people? Nothing. <laughs> I don't think I would give advice. Uh, everybody, everybody lives their life as they do and when they do. And there's, you know, I think there's comfort from other people being around, but I don't think there's advice to be given. Uh, <laughs> Even if you don't give advice, I enjoy hearing you not give it. And thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me today. My pleasure. Okay. And we'll be right back. Has this ever happened to you? She's buying tofu, has short hair, and she's wearing Birkenstocks. Or this. Mm, he knows all the words to cabaret. Now you can kiss those embarrassing moments goodbye forever with new Gaydar, the patented detection system that lets you know for sure just who is and isn't gay. Gaydar goes everywhere, to your favorite restaurant, to the movies, to the office, even to family reunions. Dad? Wear it when you're exercising or just wear it around the house. Easy. New Gaydar, handy, lightweight, foolproof, and available in 12 fashion colors. Order Gaydar now and join a family of satisfied customers. I found a lover. I found a softball team. Don't spend another second wondering. Get Gaydar now. Only $49.95, not available to right-wing senators or television evangelists. New Gaydar, because after all, we are everywhere. Well, that's it for tonight. Our thanks to everyone who helped make it possible in New York, Hollywood, Washington, in fact, around the country. We're receiving your letters, and they mean a lot to us. Thanks as well to cast members of Falsettos, to actor Jonathan Hadari, to our guests and volunteers here in the studio, and to those who work so hard back at the office. There's a lot going on these days in our community, new and exciting changes. You're a part of it, and we're glad you're here. As we do on AT, I'd like to leave you with a music video of a song from the Island Records album, Folk Singer, by one of our own very talented and outperformers, Frank, singing one of the girls. You're trying to get me to shave my legs A Jen, Jenny, Tana, Pam, and Debbie Shave my legs, no way. Elena's got a bionic kidney. Michelle had surgery on her knee. Stu says Coco has natural ability, but Jim.
Jenny, Tommy, Pam, and Debbie. Are some of the girls? Jen, Jenny, Tommy, Pam, and Debbie. Are some of the girls? Jen, Jenny, Frank, Tana, Pam, and Debbie. I'm one of the girls. 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 This program has been funded by the Howard Gilman Foundation. The Gay Rose, the Gay and Lesbian Community's National 800 Number Service for Flowers, and the H. Van Amerigan Foundation. <laughs>